episode number two, and this is take two, unfortunately, but we're going to go ahead and start off. I'll introduce the pick. This is going to be the same pick as last time, the Wedge Cut Dunlop. This is the pick I'm always going to use, so I'm not going to introduce it again. And uh, I'll introduce um, my Mario Brothers pajamas, because you might catch a glimpse of it later on in the video. These are really nice. That's all I have to say about that. And uh, don't worry about the tape. Again, this has some some feature and some value to the guitar, but we'll worry about that way later. For now, we're going to worry about picking and picking techniques. The first thing I'm going to start with is, let me get in position so I don't have to bend my back. Um, first thing I'm going to start with is position. There are three main positions that you can pick at. And um, in order to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this position one right here along the bridge so maybe up to here this entire area position one then this right here will be position two all this area right here this white between these two pickups and position three is going to be between the pickup and maybe the end of the guitar right so this is where the guitar ends position three and I'm going to showcase that by playing a D chord on the tenth fret and we're going to start at position one and move to position two and then go to position three. Okay? So let's start at position one. As you can hear, it's very, very thin and twangy. Let's move on to position two. That's a much nicer tone, very smooth, very even. And then position three. Oh, that's a very deep, heavy tone. That's a very deep, heavy tone. So, what I'm going to do again to showcase this is we're going to do a couple notes. Let's say 12, 15 on the E string. And then 12, 14 on the D string. And then 12, 15 on the B string. And I'm going to do it in all three positions. So, 12, 15, E string. 12, 14, D string. 12, 15, B string. Right, that's in position one. Let's go to position two. Okay, okay, we can hear a difference. And then in position three. Oops, that happens. As we can clearly hear, as you move down from 1, 2 to 3, it gets very deep and the sound gets very dark. Over here the sound is very bright and twangy and over here it's more, a little bit smoother and then over here is a very dark sound, very, very deep. And you can just experiment around on the guitar and play something. <laughs> You can hear how if you wanted to play a solo or a scale or something just by playing and moving your hand up and down the fret as you're picking up and down the neck as you're picking you can get totally different sounds out of your guitar and that's something to keep in mind when you're listening to very very technical pros because they can get a lot of weird sounds out of the guitar and a lot of people are going to finick around with the equalizers and with the values on the guitar but sometimes it's just the where they're picking it gives it a different value and we have to be considerate of that. So that's all I wanted to say as for positions. Now, hand position is another thing. So I'm going to turn the guitar. And um, for rock, it's very common to see someone play something. Like, I'm going to play a C power chord. And then palm mute it. And you can hear that... Picking takes a very different approach when, imagine palm muting down there on the first position, or in the second. Wow, you get bar barely any sound out of that. And then in the third, you just get that deep sound, but you don't really hear any notes. So what you want to do is you want to find the ideal position where your hand can rest gently on the strings, and you get just the right amount of... of, of um, of, I guess, wave to it. I don't know how to explain it. 
So here I'm getting pretty good wave. I can push my hand back, but then I'm getting too much. It may as well just be open. So I'll try to keep it right here so that I can hear the difference between when I palm mute it and when I don't. Pretty easy stuff, right guys? No big deal. This is just the basics of picking. And of course, we can go really in depth with all this and see um, all the stuff we can use with it. But for now, this will do. Um, this will give you guys some stuff to think about when you want to write music or something and you want to find different notes and different sounds. For example, let's say I wanted to have a, pos uh, a progression in G. Right, so I'm gonna go G, C, D, and then when I hit E minor, I'll move from regular positioning and I'll just move on to the thin first position on the picking. And let's see how it sounds. So I'm just gonna hit. It's all regular positioning. And imagine you're writing a song and then you wanna go into E minor. the way the song just feels different just by picking in the first position and then we're going to go down to the third position it sounds very very it gives the song so much flavor and basically all I'm doing is just G, C, D and an E minor a very simple chord progression but just by finding different areas here I can add so much depth to my sound and it can really influence how my song sounds and what I'm trying to say so just wanted to give you guys some pointers as to where to position how hard to hit the strings when you're palm muting you want to gently rest your hand that's that's it don't don't sit there and try to like ah you're not gonna get anything and the more you press on the strings the more the sound distorts so this, you can hear that the, the tone goes up and then comes back down the harder I press. So you want to make sure that you keep the correct tone just a little bit muted. You don't want to have the, that sounds terrible. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about <clears throat> is going to be picking techniques. As you can tell, it's I've just been picking down. Dun, 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 dun. But what you really want to be doing is you want to be alternate picking. That means that you want to pick down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And I have some simple exercises that we can do that don't require a lot of movement with this hand. You can just keep this hand somewhere and just do this motion to get used to it because I will show you guys something like let's say I wanted to do a major scale in E right and I just wanted down picking that's about as fast as I can do it now if I wanted to do up picking It's even slower to get it clean. I have to go way slower. See what I mean? So you definitely don't want to have one or the other. You want to have both. And let's see how fast I can do it. And that's that's an average speed for doing um, doing a scale. And it all comes down to the fact that I can pick up and down and not just down. When I first started picking, I used to hold my pick like that. And I would pick like that. With the with the edge, with the with the thin edge. And I would pick. And it sounded disgusting. And that's terrible. Terrible. And I had to learn to just turn my hand. Like as though I wanted to um, grab a piece of paper. So let me try finding a piece of paper to grab in one of these drawers. Probably bound to be some paper. Alright, I have a 
comic book here that I can totally grab. Yeah. So when you grab a piece of paper, right, you you take this motion. Let me show you guys my hand. Right? I mean, these fingers can be doing whatever they want. But for the most part, your thumb and your index finger are the two main things. So now I'm just going to remove the piece of paper, keep the position, close the drawer, and notice that, notice that, the position, and we want to put the pick in there. Good. Good. Yeah. So we can see that it's just like grabbing a piece of paper. And the little bit of the pick, just the bare tip has to pass the thumb. See that? See how little of it actually passes the thumb? So that when I play, I get barely any pick touching the string. This gives me highest control. This means that I can control the amount of pick that goes into it. I definitely don't want, you know, I don't want this, this action to be happening. Because then when I'm going to go pick, it's just going to come flying off when I get excited. So we definitely want to have a firm grasp on it. And now, the best thing that I can give you guys, the best advice I can give you for picking up and down is chromatic scales. So I'm going to go over a chromatic scale real quick. And we're going to do it in A. This is A right here. And chromatic means all notes. So we're going to go A and then just every single fret. Let me see if I can show it better. So fret, 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 fret. Next string, one, two, three, four. Next string, one, two, three, four. Next string, uh, 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 uh. Next string, next string. Good, and then back down. All the way back down. And this is on A. So I'm going between 5 and 9. 5, 6, 7, uh, oh sorry, 5, 6, 7, 8. 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then back down. 7, 6, 5, 7, 8, 7, 6, 5, 8, 7, 6, 5, 8, 7, 6, 5, 8, 7, 6, 5, 8, 7, 6, 5. And you want to get your hand used to doing that. Used to doing that motion before you start picking. Try to make it roll. Like if you notice my hands, they tend to... Let me see if I can find a good position to put it in. This might be good. See how it kind of like... My, my hands roll. There's a very steady flow going. It's not like ah I'm not ninjaing and attacking the the frets. I try to keep a very steady flow. Try to keep my fingers as close to the frets as possible, even when I'm lifting off. Notice you can barely tell that I lift off to the next string. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that chromatic scale, and with this other hand, what we're gonna find. If I can get it. We're going to practice now without the other hand. I'm just going to mute. And we're going to practice four on each string. One, two, three, four. And again. Don't worry about getting it even. Don't worry about how many the pauses in between strings. I, right now we don't care about con continuity. We just we don't care about how how fluid it sounds. We just want one string to sound good. Good. Next string. Good. Next string. Next string. Next string. Next string. Okay. Eventually, when you get comfortable enough picking up and down, you can worry about filling in the gap between strings. Making sure it's even. What we don't want is this. That gap right there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We want it. 
very continuous. Okay? So now we're going to put the two together. And I'm back 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're going to pick with this hand up and down. We're going to start down, then up. Down, up, down, up, always. Down, up. Let me try backing up a bit, and I'll show you guys again. Oh, I hit the camera. Five, six, seven, eight, and we'll see my down, up motion. And then back down. Good, good. Now we'll start up, then down. Up, then down. See how much harder it is? Up, then down. See, I have, I have problems with it. So it's all good, you know, like, no one's perfect at it right away. So this is a basic technique for getting us to start picking down, up, down, up, and the difference between down, up, and up, down. So starting down, up, and starting up, down. If we notice that when we transition to the next string, sometimes it's easier than other times. If we go down, up, down, up, down, up, then the next string we're going to hit down. That's pretty simple for me. Maybe for you guys, the other way is easier. So let's try up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So for me, that's tougher because I have to jump over the string and then hit up again. And that's, to me, a little bit tougher than going, um, going down and then hitting up. It's almost like I'm sliding down and then coming back up. But some, see, when you start down, when you get to the next string, you're going to hit the down and then up. So it's almost like, oh, you fell, okay, yay. But when you start up, you have to skip over the string. So you're going to go up, down, up, down. Oh, I got to skip over it. Up, down. That to me is a little bit tougher, but for some people it might be easier and it might be tougher the other way. It's all a matter of preference. And um, working on your picking is extremely important because oftentimes what we'll find is this hand can do something crazy fast but this hand can't keep up with it. So what ends up happening is it sounds sloppy because you have too few picks or too many picks. And it's important to have this syn synchronicity of left and right hand that we can pick at the same time and not have this They're like one hand is faster than the other or one hand's faster than the other. We don't want that. We want it all to be even, nicely distributed. Okay, guys, so um, <clears throat> that's going to be a basic picking for up-down. And now the last thing I wanted to show you guys is some really basic techniques for how to pick using um, string skipping because string skipping is extremely important and I don't think people cover it enough in guitar lessons. And um, in order to do this, all we're going to do, I, I feel like my guitar is shining and it, it's bothering people. Let me know, please, in the comments or whatever. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the 12th fret. I'm just going to, you know, just lay my hand on the 12th fret so that I can get some sound. Let me actually move this. This is definitely too shiny. Okay. Okay. I'm going to lay my hand on the 12th fret. See how I get those harmonics? I'm barely touching it. 
And what I'm going to do, just to show you guys, is I'm going to start on the first string, down, and then hit the next string up, and then back to the first string, hit it down again, skip the next string and go to the next string. So let me explain it better because I think that's super confusing. Starting on the E string, down, A string, up, E string, down, D string, up, E string, down, G string, up, E string, down, B string, up, E string, down, E string, up. So it should sound like this. And we can take that backwards as well. Right, so we're doing this skipping to get our hands used to knowing where to land. Because sometimes we underestimate or overestimate. So that was starting down. And now we can do the same thing, same thing starting up. So I'm going to do the same pattern but starting with an upstroke and then skipping over down, up, then down, up, then down, up, then down. See, it's, it's kind of tough. I just made this exercise today and I think it works really well and it's helping me discover where I'm bad, and I'm very bad at starting up. I, I like very much to start down, so I'm going to need to work on that. And, um, you know, hopefully see some improvement as time progresses. So let's try down. We'll do one down, and then another one starting up. So down. And then up. As you can see, I have a hard time hitting the last E string when I start up. And make sure that you're hitting up, then down, up, then down. Don't ever do up, 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 or down, 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 down. That defeats the purpose of the exercise. You want to get used to alternate picking and skipping over strings, which is a tedious and annoying process, but we can all get through it. And I think uh, those kinds of exercises are pretty nice and they help you a lot in, um, in learning how to develop good technique. So um, yeah, I, I think that will be enough for the picking techniques and, and that kind of stuff. This, this should be enough to cover, to help us get through the rest of the series. So what we learned today is we learned the different positions to pick at, the first position, second and third. We learned uh, nice positioning for palm muting. We learned that just by changing where we pick, we can affect a song tremendously. Um, we also learned how to sync up our our left and right hands with um, maybe starting with some chromatic scales and alternate picking, right? And then um, doing the same thing and starting the alternate picking on an upstroke instead of a downstroke. So getting used to doing stroking in both ways, not just always start down but sometimes start up. And it might be easier sometimes um, when you start up or down, depending on the situation. Um, it, uh, guitar is very open to, um, you know, technique is very good, but sometimes when you get into the actual practice and try to play something, you'll notice that maybe if I don't pick this one and then just skip over that and pick the next one, then it must it becomes really easy to do this weird solo. And, um, you know, it's all a matter of knowing where to do and what to do it and then learning how to take, take, subtract from that and simplify it and make it as easy as possible. But in order to do that, we start with the basics. Um, so then we learned how to sk string skip. Oh, that's a tongue twister. String skip. Um, effectively, starting down and then up. And, um, yeah, uh, with all that together we should be able to uh, come up with something very nice. And um, I'll show you guys a progression really quick that I like to use when I'm doing um, practicing my up and down strokes. And it's based off of major chords. So I'm going to start in A and I'm going to go um, the A 
and then so A is the fifth fret on the E string, the seventh fret D string, seventh fret um, A string, uh, sixth fret G string, seventh fret D string, fifth fret B string, sixth fret G string, and then last one is seven, uh, fifth fret A string. That's a bit of a tongue twister. I'll try to get the tabs up. If you guys really want them, just let me know. Okay. And uh, alternate pick. Alternate pick. Start down. And then start up. That one's, a, that one's a bit of a tongue twister, but basically what you're doing is you're doing an, an A major and you're skipping over a string every every time you pick. So you're skipping over I'm just A major. And uh, I like to do it as individuals to get my fingers loose too. But you can actually just do it as a as the major chord and then just pick it individually. Skipping the strings and going up then down and then down then up. So that should cover this exercise. Um, hopefully you guys were able to take something out of it. If you need tabs for anything, uh, let me know. Um, let me know if the light was too bright. I tried to cover it a bit but I think that my guitar is like super reflector right now. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. All right. And uh, the next video should be out next week. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. And um, yeah, let me know. Thank you.